Hello fellow Minecraftians, Lost here with another tutorial, this time covering the engines that were added by the Thermal Expansion mod in the new Tekkit mod pack. Um, I won't cover the original Buildcraft energy sources because the, you're probably used to them from the original Tekkit or other um, mod packs and to be honest there are probably millions of videos about them detailing them in much more detail than I could ever be bothered to try. So I'm just going to cover these two because these are personally my favourites, although I have started using the combustion engines more. There's, uh, this is the steam engine and this is the magmatic engine. Now although the steam engine is the first tier of engines, I'm going to cover the magmatic first purely because it's a little simpler. The magmatic engine will output four Minecraft joules per tick, which is quite a good amount and obviously it runs on lava. Nice and simple. Now with the engines they will not face anything unless they are next to it. So if I was to put a powered furnace here and then place the engine it would automatically face the furnace. But if your engines for whatever reason are facing in the wrong way just play, uh, get your machines down and you can right click them with a crescent hammer though I believe a build craft wrench works also just right click and then they'll face in the right direction. Nice and simple. Now the thermal expansion machines are actually on by default so the very moment you put lava into them or steam etc they will start um, so you will need a lever to switch them off rather than a lever to switch them on. I'm not sure why it's that way around and to be honest I really it really doesn't bother me. Um, but yet yeah, the magmatic will put out four minecraft joules per tick. Now both the engines, steam and magmatic, are quite intelligent really because if your machine for whatever reason has stopped working, maybe it's not being fed any more resources, in this case a powered furnace, it might not have anything left to smelt, um, obviously the internal buffer is going to fill up. Now when the machine is full, your magmatic engine will use less fuel and slow down until its own internal buffer is filled up. Um, and then unlike uh, previous incarnations of MJ Power, they will not explode. Neither of them, neither steam or magmatic engine will explode. I have a demonstration over here. What actually happens is they will overheat and freeze. Now there are two ways to fix this. It's not really a problem. I, I quite often let my magmatics um, overheat because I can't be bothered to go turn them off. All you have to do is either break and replace them, obviously like this one has a lot of lava in, uh, okay three and a half buckets of lava isn't really a lot if you've got a nether supply, but either way it's a waste if you just break it and replace it, but that would fix it. Or you could just right click it with a crescent hammer, like so, and away it'll go again. Um, or I believe a buildcraft wrench will work for fixing them, I haven't tested it, um, but I believe it will. Either way, you should have a crescent hammer, just because they look better than the Buildcraft wrench, in my opinion. Okay, so that is the magmatic engines, nice and simple. Uh, the steam engines, as you see here, again, if we get a machine up, uh, same principles go. If you place them down next to a machine, they will automatically face in the right direction. If not, you can make them face in the right direction with a right click with the crescent hammer. Now, being steam engines, they will require some fuel, in this case we'll be using some coal, and they also require water. So pop some water in, again they will automatically be on. Now I don't, did I say before, the steam engines output two minecraft jaws per tick, so half as much as a magmatic, but you'll make one of these first in order to make the dusts to make the magmatic. Um, so use these, or failing that go for a sterling engine, because they're nice and simple, but the sterling engines are a bit terrible. Well, they're quite terrible, so if you can, make one of these instead. They're much better. Now again, you'll need to keep supplying it with water and fuel to keep it going. Uh, redstone signal to turn them off. Nice and simple. Okay, so to supply them with a permanent supply of water, uh, if you've watched my other tutorial on the aqueous accumulator, which is here, which is an infinite water source. You can use one of those. So if we pop a machine down and then the engine and then a golden waterproof pipe, shift click it on there and the aqueous accumulator will keep it topped up. Now one aqueous accumulator I believe 
We'll keep two steam engines topped up. Uh, they're not expensive. A bit of gold, some glass, some iron. It's well worth making one of those, especially if you're using uh, steam engines. And if you've got a Steve's Cart tree farm making you lots of charcoal, then uh, skip the magmatics and just have loads of steam engines powering stuff. Okay, now another thing that people seem to be getting wrong with the Buildcraft energy is if you're input outputting into pipes. There we go, gold conductive pipe. Now if you just lay your engines down like this, like so, again you see they're all facing the wrong way. You can change that, although it's being silly. Now there is a reason for this. I think the Buildcraft uh, engines won't, will face the pipe straight off. But these won't. Now the reason why that is, with everything, is that they require a wooden conductive pipe. Much the same as pulling uh, items out of a chest, you always use a wooden conductive pipe. Or taking the energy out of uh, an engine will also require a wooden conductive pipe. But obviously it doesn't need to be piped. You see how it automatically, no matter what angle I'm facing when I lay the engine, automatically pops it straight in. Now if we pop a machine on the end and then we chuck some lava in these bad boys you'll see the blue line that is the energy you must have the wooden conductive pipes to draw the energy out and then it will feed over into this now I'm not sure about this about tech it but in uh, another incarnation was it minecrack I forget which mod pack I was playing but if you if you overcharged this pipe they would explode. Now, I'll turn them off just in case. I haven't uh, tested it, I don't wish to find out because personally I don't use pipes. Um, I highly recommend that you use redstone energy cells and redstone conduit which is this stuff you see over here. Uh, I shall be doing the tutorial on that right now actually so if you check my channel if it's not up it will be up very shortly the tutorial on this stuff which I highly recommend, you will definitely, definitely choose that over the pipes if, you're, if your base is getting anywhere towards being uh, a, you know, halfway decent. Right, well I hope this helped you guys out a little bit. Have fun guys!